There's a word. Rapere. This is where the word rape comes from. Rapere. What does rapere mean? Rapere means to take. So rape, historically, was not about non-consensual sexual violation or about humiliation or about predatory acts, the imposition of power <coughs> one over another. Rape has historically been the crime of taking something, the crime of deprivation of property. And it was a crime that was committed against either a father or a brother or a husband. Because a woman's chastity, a woman's honor, did not in fact belong to her, but belong to either her father or her brother, if there was no father, or her husband. What is feminism? Exerting the rights of women. Okay. Exerting what? Advocating the rights of women. Being identified equally to a man. Being identified equally to a man. Notions of equality. Like a woman's perspective. A woman's perspective on society, on issues. A critique of patriarchy and feminism is essentially equality between genders. Simple as that. And the first way was very straightforward. It was suffrage, which meant right to vote. Women wanted the right to vote. Men could vote, women wanted the right to vote. The second wave of feminism came with a desire to eliminate gender bias within social institutions. Why? Because women were confined to the home. They had a particular role. And at some point, many women said, what if I don't want to stay at home and raise kids and prepare a meal for my husband? What if I want to go out there and go to school? What if I want to go out there and work? What if I believe I can run the country? Enter the third wave. The third wave ended up being as a way to create greater diversity within the feminist movement. Why? Well, because many non-white, non-middle to upper class women felt that they were being marginalized within the feminist movement. What does any of this have to do with legal theory? So is the law representative of all members of society? And the argument on the part of a number of feminists is that, in fact, it's not. It's not because the law, on some level, is male-centric, or on a number of levels is male-centric. So think about how a man is going to interpret a law versus how a woman is going to interpret a law. Think of the law that would be passed by a male legislator versus the law that would be passed by a female legislate. You can think that there might be differences. So we see that there's a male monopoly over legal activities, and we see that what women are doing is using law as a way to reform a lot of these activities to make them more palatable to women. Is it a crime for a husband to rape their wife? Can a husband rape their wife? No. Yes, since 1985. Prior to that in New Zealand, there was no crime of marital, marital rape. <coughs> so when understanding the relationship of feminism to legal theory, you're essentially trying to understand the relationship of women <coughs> to a patriarchal society. A patriarchal society that will produce patriarchal laws. When is it acceptable to bomb another country? During wartime? During wartime? When it's going to protect more lives? When it's going to protect more lives. It's never. Never? <laughs> <laughs> I asked this question last
last year. I asked, when is it acceptable to torture someone? And I was kind of shocked because no one said never. And I thought, really, is in the mood, the climate has shifted. And yet now we consider torture acceptable under a number of different circumstances. Just like we consider bombing people under certain circumstances. Something that's acceptable. Now, when it's acceptable is obviously going to vary from person to person and from <coughs> people to people. The people who have been on the receiving end of bombs are usually not very supportive of humanitarian intervention because it often involves killing them to protect them. To weigh on the shorthand, as I said, for third world approaches to international law. We understand international law and we think international law is universal. International law applies to all nations. But does it apply equally to all nations? There are some countries, there are world countries, that have been bombed a lot. But there are many first world countries that have not. So TWAIL is essentially a methodology by which we critique the actions that are carried out in the name of international law from the perspective of third world peoples to show, to demonstrate that law at the global level suffers from the same type of imbalances that we have in law at the domestic level. So here, the point of this is not for you to take a position and say, that's wrong, or that's right. It's to understand that what is law, and why people obey the law, <coughs> will vary according to context, will vary according to circumstances, will vary according to methodology, and according to theory. You have to be able to navigate all of these different theoretical perspectives in explaining why the law is the law and why people obey it. Why has feminism gotten a bad rap? A bad rap in the sense that people, including many women, refuse to identify with it. What is humanitarian intervention? 